It's March 9th, and this is your Monday Microdose. I lost an hour. Somebody owes me an hour today. I think I'm going to have to wait till November to get it back. I would say the, the question that I've gotten most often over the last handful of years and I continue to get, and I don't mind answering it, is what's the difference between Surly and Rivendell? And I touched on this, I think, a little bit when I talked about the differences between the Bridge Club and the Clem Smith Jr. It's, it's a, it can be a difficult question to answer because at some point we start dealing with perceptions. And my perceptions can be uh, different than yours. So I'm going to try to dig in a little deeper um, on this. And we can hit the easy ones first, which is, you know, they tend to be, or there are two companies that seem to be saying the same thing, albeit in different ways. And I think that that can, you know, just add to the confusion sometimes. But there's easy things, right? The aesthetic. Some people really like lugs. And to them, you know, that's worth the expense. Some people like being part of a tribe, right? A club. And with both of those brands, you'd most certainly have clubs. And maybe one of them speaks to you more than the other. There's the aesthetic part of it. You know, the lugs and the wet paint versus the TIG welding and the powder coat. Two different ways to get to the same end result. There's obviously an expense difference, to be sure. You know, you can customize the living heck out of a long haul trucker or a pack rat or a bridge club uh, for what it would cost you to build a, you know, kind of down the middle Rivendell. But really what it comes down to, I was going to say quality of the ride, but that's not right because they're both quality rides. It's the characteristics of the ride. The characteristics of a Rivendell, and this is where it gets slippery because we start talking about my perceptions the characteristics of a Rivendell are born, I think, entirely from the mind of Grant Peterson. And what I always felt like, there was a time when I had a, a long haul trucker and I had an A. Homer Hilson. And I would go back and forth and ride those two bikes. And to me, because I don't, I'm not a, a nerd about the numbers. To me, it always felt like I was sitting in that Rivendell and I was more on top of the trucker. Now, I can theorize or speculate that this has to do uh, with the fact that the Rivendell's got, you know, a more relaxed geometry and a lower bottom bracket in that all played into me feeling like I was sitting inside this bike. I can't say that, you know, one or the other better is, again, it's a really slippery word. The best, the best story that I can tell you is that during this time when I had both of these bikes, I got... You know, I called up or actually sent an email to 
one of the guys inside Surly that I know, and I said, hey, I'm thinking about offering to my customers the ability to, you know, customize the color of their frames, a la, you know, what Blue Lug does in Tokyo. Because, that, you know, if, if Surly, if there's any one thing that is polarizing, it's generally the colors. I jokingly say sometimes I think they pick the colors um, because they know some people are just going to hate them. <laughs> and that would be a very Surly thing to do. Um, but so I, I said I want to, you know, offer customers the ability to do this, but I also I don't want to foul up the, uh, the warranty. And he said, no, as long as you're doing it, you know, there's no problem. So I took my trucker and I stripped it down and I was going to have it stripped and powder coated in a different color. But I didn't do it right away. And the bike sat in pieces for months. And all I did was ride my Rivendell. Well, the months went by and I gathered up the frame and took it to the powder coater and had it coated. Got it back to the shop, put some decals on it, put it back together again. And I have to be honest, I was a little afraid. I was scared that that bike wasn't going to be what I remembered it being. And I, and I was afraid that it was, that I was going to be disappointed based on all the months that I was riding this Rivendell. And to my delight and surprise and relief, I got back on the bike, um, took a few pedal strokes and went, now nah, there's my old friend. It rode every bit as good as I remembered it being. Still different, but just as good. I don't know that any of this goes a long way towards telling people what the differences are. Uh, they're both great bikes. And I think if you can afford a Rivendell and you line up with all the things that Rivendell quote-unquote stands for, meaning their philosophy on bikes and how they should ride, and then I, I don't know how you would be disappointed. Um, and that, you know, goes... <laughs> That leads to another uh, topic, which, uh, you know, I'm having trouble coming up with the word at this moment. I had it about 15 minutes ago before I turned the camera on and the mic. Um, you know, the anticipation, the buildup of these bikes and how sometimes, you know, they can't ever reach the... The, the thing that you've built them up to be, but I'll save that for another, another video. I don't tire of answering this question. I just don't think that there's any way for me to give anyone a definitive answer because at the end of the day, everybody, you know, is going to be different. Have, have most people that have ridden you know, Surleys and Rivendells back to back ended up buying Rivendells if they were able. Yeah, but there's one that hasn't. There was one guy that said, I just can't, I can't tell the difference. I can't tell enough of a difference to spend the extra money. So I guess you're just going to have to, you know, come to Indianapolis or go to Walnut Creek. Well, I guess you can't go to Walnut Creek because they don't have Surleys, but, um, yeah, ultimately it's 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 up to the individual. But the again, the most defining thing that I can tell you is just there is a different characteristic to the way a Rivendell rides. I've taken a couple of cracks at this, and I don't think I've done a, a good job either time. Um, I want to thank all of you. Oh, there's one other thing. So one of the things I talked about was 
that in 2004, it was either 2004 or 2005, I remember listening to my first podcast, the Adam Curry um, podcast. Adam Curry, well, I think widely recognized as the, as the person who started podcasting. And he was on the Joe Rogan podcast last week. Fascinating stuff fascinating and they talked about how all of that started and how he was friends with a guy who had written this computer uh, program and and he thought that the program could do this you know it wasn't set up for audio but he thought that it could be and how they work together and it was a wide-ranging conversation and it was real interesting and uh, if you're interested go back and check that out. I've enjoyed the interaction online. Um, the comments have been great and constructive. Uh, I would welcome you to, if you have questions, go ahead and, and put them in the comments. If you're just listening on the podcast, um, just drop me an email at info at thepsychicderailer.com. It is a handful to type and a mouthful to say, and I do apologize about that uh, ahead of time. ThePsychicDrailer.com, info at ThePsychicDrailer.com. Uh, on the YouTubes, just put them down in the comments below. ThePsychicDrailer.com is my shop on the web. That's the place where you can read my blog posts, uh, sign up for emails so that those blog posts uh, will be delivered to you as I write them. Uh, there's some store merch there, T-shirts and sensible yet adventurous can koozies, a must-have. Uh, and, of course, uh, I do sell some of the finest cycling gear available, known to man or woman. Again, let me know what you think. Hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell if you're on the YouTube Um yeah. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Like I said, I don't know that I uh, have done the question justice, and I don't know that I ever will. But keep asking them, and I'll keep trying to answer. Till next time. Be nice, work hard, ride bikes, play music when you can. I'll talk to you soon.